Il est bonne place. isn't working correctly I have no idea but I need to have a uh, twitch opened to see the chat because I'm not fortunate enough to have two screens I wish I had a second screen okay, let's talk to the doc hey doc can you estimate the time of that I would put it between 1 and 2 30 a.m. Normally a body cools at 1 to 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour, but the officer at the scene reported the air conditioning was off all night, which throws off the standard computations. Let's see, what can we learn from the victim's blood loss? With three shots to the body, blood loss collected from the floor is consistent. Your victim was very likely shot at that site. What's the likely cause of death? Glancing at the body, I figured the shots to the chest were probably fatal. One penetrated the right lung and bounced around, filling the lungs with blood, suffocating the victim. Only that wasn't the case here. Not much blood in the lungs. The shot to the head was fatal. Once it entered, the brain shut down and immediately stopped all bodily functions. It's like three screens stopped. Let's see. And it's not my video crapshoot part. Note the scattered I'm nature of the gunpowder specks surrounding the entry wound. Some burned, some not, indicating the shot to the forehead was fired 12 to 16 inches away. Here are the rounds from the chest cavity. They're 22 LR cartridges based on the 2.5 gram average weight. 22 caliber bullets taken from the victim's body. Okay. Was the victim shot with a handgun or a rifle? Could be either. Obviously a 22 rifle or pistol uses the same ammunition. Okay. Can we determine the trajectory of the bullets? One of the chest bullets went through the body completely. If you find it, I can help you reconstruct the bullet trajectory. Okay. So let's head back to the crime scene and see if we can find the bullet.
Hey, you got gamer's eyes yourself. A stray bullet could have a lot to say to us about exactly what went down here. We've done all we can do with that item. Let's run this evidence by brass. Variations from the bullet in the wall match the bullet in the victim. Okay. So let's get to Braston with the wallet. Can you run a back trunk check on the victim? I've been pulling double shifts due to the workload, but I was able to get this for you. Stan Everston. No priors, much less convictions. Pretty well off. At least enough so to live in Beverly Hills, CA. Wife's been at home all week with their newborn son. The late Mr. Everston was executive producer at LZP Entertainment. He's worked for several big companies in the game biz, worked on several high profile titles. But he has a rep for pushing people to new heights and sometimes pushing them too far. Finding enemies won't be a taxing task. Can you verify that the victim was sharing a room? Let me just check the computer. Okay, Mr. Everston was sharing a room with Andy Penmore. Next door is the gunslinging Ms. Maya Wynn. All checked in yesterday afternoon, Sphere Hotel. Location edit. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. Okay, so that's our hint to go to. <laughs> Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Are you Andy Penmore? Perhaps you have some ID? We're with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We have a few questions. Yes, I'm, I'm Andy Penmore. Is this about Stan? He never came home last night, but then this is Las Vegas. I'm afraid Mr. Everston is dead. Is this some kind of weird joke? Craig behind this maybe, or, or Maya? More of her off-the-wall publicity? I've been up all night slaving over some final tweaks Stan wants, and I'm in no mood for practical jokes. No joke? He's dead. Murdered. In your demo booth. No. He was shot three times, Mr. Penmore. That's why we're here. Oh my god. This is, this is real. Really? Re Stan's my friend. He can't... We were just together last night, so... My god. This is no game. This is real, Mr. Penmore. When was the last time you saw Stan? Just, just last night, in the demo room, uh, putting finishing touches on the presentation, looking for bugs, uh, discussing these final tweaks. God, I, I, I can't believe this. I, uh, I headed back to my hotel room at around one in the morning. Uh, Stan wanted me to get on those fixes, and he stayed at the booth, preparing for the media demo today. Was there anyone else at the demo booth when you left? No, nobody I saw anyway. Mind if we have a look around? Sure, sure. This is this is a disaster, personally and and professionally. I'll help in any way I can. Oh, sorry, the heat is getting to me. I'm can't stop yawning. Uh, can we get your prints and do a GSR test to exclude you? 
Uh, anything you need. Hey, a scorpion. Maybe we ought to call Gris in. Oh, I keep forgetting you're new. Grissom gets excited about bugs. Only, I don't know if you'd call this a bug exactly. Not the right tool for this. I don't want to get it with my bare hands. Vic had a cell number, but we didn't recover a phone from the body. Did the killer lift it for some reason? Do anything with the laptop. Nor with the suitcase. Well, Miss Wynn painted a picture of a hype machine rolling happily along, but it looks like Stan the Man was not so happy with her marketing campaign. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Sure, of course. At a big show like this, he'd be dead without it. Well, sorry. Poor choice of words. Did he have his phone when you last saw him? Uh, let me think. Yeah, yeah, he had it, because he text messaged me right after I got back to the room. Asked me to order a cob salad from room service and have it waiting for him. Things still sitting here, wilting. What do you know about this note? Just that I saw Maya wad it up and throw it at Stan yesterday, right after we checked in. She was pissed. Why was Maya so upset? Actually, the surprise would have been for her not to be. You see, she and Stan, they've been at each other's throats for two, three weeks. It's been getting nastier and nastier as we got closer and closer to this show. They did not see eye to eye on the market strategy at all. Whose bet was the scorpion in? Stan's. Do you know how it got in the bed? Well, looks kind of bad, sort of sick at the moment, but I let this friend of ours do that as a practical joke. Thing was dead, couldn't hurt him, and Craig said Stan would get a kick out of it. Those two were always doing that kind of thing to each other, so I just went along. Was the scorpion alive when he put it in the bed? Hell no, it was dead. Couldn't hurt him, or me for that matter. Tell us about Greg Landers. He's a game designer who was one of the founders of the company with Stan, even before I arrived. He left about a year ago. His sense of humor is kind of out there, called an acquired taste. For example, just before he left the company, when he was working on Gut Wrench 3, he put in a cheat code that lets you kill the boss. Of course, killing bosses is common in shooting games. At the end of a level, it's usually big bad guys or grotesque monsters or whatever. Not yuppie businessmen who look exactly like Stan Everston. You had to be there. Anyway, this was about the time Stan fired him. Okay, where is Greg now? Gee, I, I have no idea. He drove here on his own just to attend the trade show and hang out with us. Do you have his car make or license? I couldn't give you his license under hypnosis, man. It's some SUV, American make, I think. 
Ask Maya, why don't you? Craig was hitting on her pretty hard yesterday, and they were getting friendly. Saw him exchange phone numbers. Yes, that's your PDA. Yeah, it is. May we collect it as evidence? Well, uh, I, I know I said I'd do anything to help out, but there is a line. I, I have a lot of stuff coming through here, like time-critical bug reports on the game. I, I'm sorry, I can't give it up, especially since it has nothing to do with Stan's death. Okay. Let's head back to the lab. really match it to anything because you don't have anything to match it against that's boring mm. let's see what doc robbins has to say about this oh, we go to the dock with the scorpion that's cool hi doc Let's go to the doctor. Two very different angles of entry. Two straight on, relatively, in the chest, but the forehead shot indicates an upward angle. Since you found the bullet in the wall slightly above the victim's chest, this tells us our Vic had fallen before the fatal headshot was dispatched. I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. to the girl if she's still there. Yep. Whose shirt is this? It's not one of ours. Our ex designer was wearing a shirt like that yesterday. How did the shirt get ripped? Hey, I don't do wardrobe. I'm marketing. No idea. What's the ex designer's name? Craig. Craig Landers. Used to work with us. Brilliant guy. He created the Fuzzy and Bill franchise for LZP. He's a little odd, but it's not really unusual for those creative types. You don't get into this business because you're normal. Why is Greg no longer employed by Elzik? Honestly, I have no idea. He left before I was hired. Do you know where Greg is now? No clue. If I had to guess, I'd say he's probably down on the show floor, trying to score free t-shirts or pictures with the booth babes. Okay, nothing about... That drawing thingy we found. Hmm. So what do we do now? Probably go to Brass and see if he can pick up that dude. track down Stan Everson's cell phone. Yeah, I had the phone company track it to a general area using the GPS. It just arrived. Ooh, it's been a while since we had phones like this. Stan's cell phone recovered from a dumpster near the convention center. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. There's more to do with this evidence before we can process it. Oh. 
found a fingerprint. Now I have two fingerprints, now I can compare them. Woohoo! Fingerprint one. Fingerprint two. Fingerprint two. Can't use it. Not enough data to match. Ah. Nothing on the back? How boring. We've done all we can do with that item. Oh. Let's see what Doc Robbins has to say about this. That's what I wanted to do, but Doc didn't want to talk about it. Can I talk to I've you? divulged everything I can think of. Emails corrupted. A virus, maybe? I have no idea. Can we use it for anything else? No. Let's go back to the lab and check that data stick. No. I would have encrypted this little number myself if I was standing up to a boss like that. I've printed this love letter out for you. Because you have no life doesn't mean I can't have one. I work hard and I like to work hard, but I don't burn myself out just to suit you. Keep pushing and I will push back. Got it? Good. Maya. So I guess we're traveling back to Maya. I don't have any more to say. Doc now with our beastie. I don't have anything for you right now. So helpful, these people. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. Okay guys, what should I do now? I have no idea. Could it be? 
speed any slower? That's boring. Thought maybe it had something on the back. match the bullets I've checked the wallet Ooh. not the right tool for this why doesn't it work sweet Just a partial. Maybe there's more on the rifle to find. We've done all we can do with that item. Now what should we do right now? I thought we could find that guy, but... The guy who made the t-shirt and stuff? Let's try again with Brass. Maybe he can help now. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong here. Am I missing something? Anybody help? I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. I've divulged everything I can think of. I know that'll help rule me out as a suspect. We'd like to do a gunshot residue test as well. It's standard in all gun-related investigations. Sure. for assault rifle. GSR from the Vic matches the residue on Maya's hands. For Stan being a hands-on boss, our marketing gal got around too. Warrant available from Ross. Can I get a warrant? For Maya. Can I get a warrant to bring Maya in for a question? We have a very angry lady who likes to hold guns. And she also has GSR in her hands that matches the GSR on the Vic? Yeah, let's bring her in for questioning. Did you pick 
face the gun as Ben's hands. No! Why were your prints on I'm the one who rented the thing. Why wouldn't my prints be on them? Why is a GSR in your house? We were at a firing range and, uh, keep this to yourself, but I overslept after partying last night and skipped my shower. Why were you firing weapons at the gun club? I created a team building exercise to boost morale to blow off steam. It was also part of our marketing position, how we put realism into the game. It was a photo op. We had our pictures taken while firing guns for sending out to the media. Who else was at the gun club? It was our core team, me, Stan, and Andy, plus Craig. Stan invited him too, at Andy's insistence. I guess it was old loyalty to a founding member. What weapons were you firing? Couple of them. I kind of dig handguns, and they look good on me. <laughs> Ever seen those Hong Kong action movies, Chicks with Guns? I started with a 22, but it just didn't do it for me. So I switched to a 45. That one kicked ass. Oh, sorry. That must really sound in bad taste. Where are the rest of the weapons from the case? The rest of the weapons are still waiting to be picked up at the gun club. I brought the M4 assault rifle over early to ensure it would fit in the display. Why did you rent so many weapons? The realism of our game stems from the fact that every in-game gun is modeled after the real deal. And we have them here at the booth to make that point. This industry is heavily male-oriented, including the retailers, and everybody knows boys like toys. So I brought the toys for the boys to look at. Did you rent any real weapons? No, no, we originally arranged to rent replica guns for the show, but when we picked them up, they all had a red cap on the muzzle. Gut Wrench 3 is all about realism. There's no way we can display weapons that are obviously toys. This was a last minute wild idea I had, out of the gun club. I suggested we rent them from the club, and Stan loved the idea. Where is this gun club? I don't know exactly. I mean, I, I don't live here. I just hopped in a cab and said gun club. You're detectives, right? How about checking a phone book? Mm, why were you wearing costumes at the booth? Again, realism and promotion. All of us here would role play a combat situation right in the booth, you know, every few minutes? Which is why I'm dressed for action. And sadly, Stan is too. I don't understand. What's the point of play acting shoot em up? To bring the game to life. To make the buyers feel like they were inside the game. To stimulate them to see our game over every other one here. Listen, a trade show is a kind of carnival. And this was effective. And yes, it was my idea. And hey, I'd have gone farther with it if I could. I wanted to fire off blanks, but the fire marshal nixed it. Too unsafe. So you had no form of live ammunition in your play acting? Nothing. Was Stan supposed to die? during your reenactments. Yeah, he was. Not for real, of course. But his role was to take the hit, yes, and I was the shooter. We rehearsed it a couple times right before I left last night. I just point the empty gun at him, timing it to the demo, and mime to the game sound effects. Tell us about these angry notes on your marketing materials. Look, when you get hired for a job, it's because you got the right credentials, right? I've got a master's in marketing. But Stan thinks he knows how to do my job better because he's a guy. These last two weeks, man, they've been brutal. What do you mean? The company's come under a lot of critical fire lately, over the same old blah blah, excessive violence, lack of morality. I tried to tell him that negative publicity was a good thing, but he told me I just didn't get it. I'm a woman in a man's world, you know? If a girl doesn't play hardball, she gets rolled over. I've worked too hard to have some chauvinist like Stan keep me from reaching my goals. I mean, I'm sorry he's dead. He was talented. This wasn't anything you'd, you'd kill anybody over. I just... A professional disagreement that got a little ugly, is all. Exactly how well do you know Greg Lenders? Hardly at all. I just met him yesterday evening at that gun club. Apparently he helped LZP get off the ground and... Of course, I knew about his game getting killed. Andy says you were acting very friendly. Mind telling us what that was about? What happened to what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? You're still in Vegas. What happened? Look, let's keep this confidential, because I got a life back home. Have you ever met somebody at a party or something and clicked and wound up in the backseat of a car? 
I found Craig a little bit cute last night, and I was half drunk. When did you leave his car? I left Craig around 1.30 or so, in the AM. Where is Craig's car parked? Garage, underneath the Sphere Convention Center. Only Craig isn't staying at the Sphere. Isn't staying anywhere, really. He's between gigs and on a tight budget. What kind of car is it? A new GMC Envoy. I even know his license plate because it was personalized after the characters in his game, Fuzzy and Bill. F-Z-Y-B-I-L, I think. Why did you threaten Stan in an email? I didn't threaten his ass. He was pushing too hard, and I told him to back off. That's no threat. So when you say, keep pushing, and I will push back, you meant that in the nicest way. All I meant was, clean up your act, or I'm out of here. Why are you so ready to quit? Listen, these video game guys, they're kids. Eternal kids. Well, I'm not a kid. But I do have a kid, a ten-year-old, who I like to see now and then on the rare occasion. And as a single mom facing week after week of extended periods of crunch time, well, enough's enough. It's just not worth it. Do you have other complaints about Stan? How about a boss who demands everything and doesn't appreciate anything? A micromanager who changes his mind with the wind and saves up the biggest changes for the last minute. The smallest concern, the biggest ordeal imaginable. How's that for a complaint? Anything else? Well, Stan would go on and on and on about needing to get real, to bring the gritty reality of combat into not just the game, but my campaign, while dealing with the media backlash as well. How can you reason with a guy like that? You tried at the gun club, and it was like shooting blanks. So you decided to shoot him with something else. And here's where I break down, right? Under your expert interrogation? Sorry. I hated the jerk. He was driving me insane, but I didn't kill him. Good, good evening, or maybe good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Thank you, and welcome for joining. Currently trying to solve the second case, can barely hear you. Oh, let me check. Uh, up. I have my volume out completely, I can't turn it on, maybe in the other settings. I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, wrong settings. Oh, the audio is fine on my end. Uh, I have the audio maxed out at this moment for the settings of OBS Studio. Uh, the game can be ki quite loud. I already tuned it down, down a little bit because it's very loud at times. I'll tune down the game a little bit more, maybe, then you can turn the volume up. up. Hello, Verek. Hello, Lukster. Thank you for joining. We're going to the convention center parking garage to find the car of the dude. I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much, Farrakh. <laughs> Thank you. It's very much appreciated. Are you Greg Landers? I am indeed Craig Landers, game designer, visionary, master of the universe. I'd invite you into my office, but it's a little cramped. What's up? Take care, Farrakh. Uh, Las Vegas Crime Lab, we have a few questions. Ooh, sounds serious. I'll see if I can whip up a few answers. Is it serious, guys? Yep, it's very serious. When was the last time you saw Stan Everson? Everson? Must have been, yeah, last night sometime. Why, you, you looking for him? Try the LZP demo booth. Dude lives there. Dude died there last <laughs> night. Murdered, Mr. Landers. What is this? What, uh, some kind of joke or something? Hey, hey you're not kidding, are you? Hey, well, that, that's crazy! He, he was breathing the last time I saw him, which, which must have been around uh, 10 p.m. after the party. We walked to my car, here. How was your relationship with Stan? He was like my brother. 
I mean, LZP was our mutual thing, grew out of what we had. Which was a, well, friendship, but like all brothers, we had our problems. You know, business stuff. But we went back to the birth of LZP. Anyway, he invited me to this launch party last night, so you can see we were tight, even, even now. Of course, with a demanding dude like that, control freak, he's bound to rub people the wrong way. You'll have a lot of suspects to sort out. Maybe I can help. Why are you staying in your car? Just happened to be between gigs, but with my rep, hey, I'll find something. One of the reasons I'm here at the show is to network and let people know I'm available. See, most designers would be at the show on somebody else's expense account, but right now I'm on my own dime. Only I don't have many at that. How long have you been parked here? Since opening day of the trade show? Guys, you're not gonna bust me for camping out, are you? I'm doing business. Give me a break. Have a heart. Don't don't make me move my wheels. Parking garage security isn't the crime lab's deal, but uh, I can see why you like the location. Pretty close to the convention center. You're right about that. I'm not in Vegas for the gambling. A game expo like this is a prime opportunity for a designer like me to hook up with a new company. Easy for somebody with my record to talk to the top people and recruiters. Plus, I gotta stay current. See what the competition's up to and where the virtual world is heading. Must be pretty tough. Playing video games all day. Must be tough eating donuts all day. No offense, but as often as you hear that, I get what you said. This is a tough, demanding business. Kill or be killed. I, uh, I meant that figuratively. Did you see Maya last night? Maya? Yes. Yeah, sure. Great, great girl. Woman. We connected. Uh, I've always had a kind of thing for Asian beauties, and she sure qualifies. And smart and funny. Wow. We took off after the party and had a few drinks and, and wound up in my, um, well, my, my little four wheel suite here. Did you discuss her outburst with Stan? Maybe I better go for full disclosure here. Um, one of the things we, uh, we bonded over was our mutual frustration with Stan and what a tyrant he's been lately. It's a bummer to think about now. What time were you and Maya together? Oh. Well, I, I wasn't exactly watching my watch, um, but I'd say oh, uh, just before midnight, we were together in the uh, um, on the back seat there till 1.30ish. Tried to do the gentlemanly thing and offer her a ride, but she said, oh, don't be silly, she could walk. It was just one of the outlying buildings attached to the sphere complex. Where were you after she left? Where else? So right here in my office which is also my bedroom. I, I played a few games on my handheld and finally drifted off to sleep. Is this your fuzzy and Bill's shirt? Yeah, there it is. I was handing them out at the show to, you know, hype up the characters. Where'd you find it? We found this at the crime scene. Why is your shirt torn? I have no idea. Maybe someone tore one I handed out? Did you design a game scenario where you would kill Mr. Everston? Game map of killing... Oh, oh, come on, you can't be serious. That was a joke, an inside joke, which was the last thing I designed at LZP before we fell out and I left the company. What was Stan's reaction to your game metaphor? Surprisingly, he wasn't thrilled. He had a sick sense of humor. We had that in common, a kind of dark practical joker streak, so I thought he'd laugh. But all of a sudden, Stan reacted like he'd grown a stick up his butt. That was the last reason I needed to hasta la vista. Why did you leave the company you helped for, Mr. Landers? It was just time. I'd been in on the ground floor of LZP and helped guide its direction for years, but Stan was moving us into increasingly more violent games, and I was thinking we were getting... I'm no prude or censor, but we were definitely skirting the edge of irresponsible, okay? Kids get access to these games, even the restricted ones, and I got into this field to give players entertainment, challenging entertainment sometimes, sometimes just sheer fun. But blowing people away in increasingly realistic explosions of blood and brains and bone, well, let's just say it wasn't my dream. Did you put a scorpion in Stan's bed? I'm staying perfectly straight with you guys. Yes, I put it there. It was one of the little guys I rounded up out in the desert. Why'd you put it in his bed? Haven't you heard anything I've said? We were practical jokers. Stan and me, even Andy. I know it sounds like bizarre video gamer bonding, but it's true. Can we do something with the car? Nope. Mm -hmm. That's 
Sir? I've told you everything I know. Okay, let's see what we can do now. Mm -hmm. Can we talk some more with this dude? Maybe he's got something more to say now we have talked to the other guy? Yes! How long did you work for Stan? Since the start of the company, I was the first guy he hired. He could be a tough guy to work for, but we were also friends. Anyway, it was his dough and his contacts in the biz that got the company off the ground. Of course, it was my contribution, my game code, that made the company a player. What exactly is your job? I write the programming code. Back in the early days, programmers like me were God. We designed the games, created the artwork, did all the programming. Only as the industry's grown, it's got more specialized. So my code is still what makes it all happen. I am GutWrench3. And when did Greg leave the company? Well, like I said, leave isn't exactly the word. The dude was canned. And he hasn't been able to land a job ever since. And it's been months. He's living out of his damn car, you know. Craig didn't mention being fired. You sure he didn't leave on his own? Dude, I was there. It was a raving blowout between those two. As for what was behind it, well, we were all working on Craig's little game, Fuzzy and Bill. We slaved on it for months and months, and it sold squat. It was total hard drive crash to Craig's ego when Stan pulled the plug on the promised sequel. Cancelling the game was a shock, but Craig held on, thinking he could design Gut Wrench 3. All through development, those two were at each other's throats. And last night, they picked up right where they left off, Screaming Match City. What happened between Greg and Stan last night? We were at the demo booth, getting it ready, and I took a break. Shouldn't have left those two alone, I guess. I could hear them yelling at each other, really tearing each other bloody gaping new ones. Any idea why Stan has sting marks on his foot? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. I do remember Stan bitching about his foot itching. He said he'd got a couple of wasp stings just before he flew out here. Not his weekend, huh? Why can't I remember those foot feet things? These marks are insect bites, or more precisely, stings. The tox screen isn't back, but these could be the work of a wasp. He was lucky to avoid infection, if indeed any murder victim can be called lucky. With fresh clotting like this, the man got stung within the last 48 hours. This is recent bruising within an hour or two of death, revealing a clear knuckled outline with a strange pattern. A ring, perhaps. Some more pictures. Mm, let's see what Brass has got. Brass has got something to tell us. Can you give us the address of the gun club? No problem. Here you go. Line of Fire Gun Club, 3727 North Ralston Avenue. Can I talk to a suspect again? I have no more questions. Well, let's first go to the gun club. So the crime lab's back. I was just thinking about you because our new gun club magazine came in and it's got an article about something you were asking about. Modifying guns? Take one. They're complimentary. What can I do for you, officers? Las Vegas Crime Lab. 
We have a few questions we need to ask. What services do you offer here? Our claim to fame are the public firing lanes we offer, 50 feet long. Patrons can rent weapons from us or bring their own. We offer guns for purchase as well, and our members get lower prices, lower rates on our services. We're responsible operation officers. We're all about gun safety here, offer classes for the whole family. But we also offer a tactical training course to police and military personnel. I'm sure some of your colleagues have utilized our services. For example, our changeable walkthrough course with simulated real-world environments. Oh, I'm sorry. Did a group come in here yesterday evening? The only group we had was from a video game company. A small group, just four. But they charged it on a company card. Did you notice anything unusual with the group? Actually, yes. You see, people usually come out for one of two reasons. To have a good time, or to do some serious training. These four, well, if I had known what kind of mood they were in, I don't know if I'd done, done business with them. They were at each other, really nasty insults, arguments, two in particular. Which couple was, uh, arguing? A young Asian woman and an older guy. Handsome, I'd say. They were in a huge fight. I mean, over the top to where I thought they might come to violence, which is not good in this environment. I came out and told them to get their act together, or they'd be out on the sidewalk where they could fight without guns in their hands. When were they here? We can check the sign-in sheet for sure, but best I remember, in the evening, around 8 till maybe 10. Can we take a look around? We are pro-police here at the gun club. You guys are the first line of defense and we back you all the way. Private lane number one is still in the condition they left it, so hey, do your thing. A useful list of who had brought what to the party. Did Naya rent a set of firearms? <laughs> set of firearms? More like an arsenal. But understand, we don't rent out functioning firearms. Well, they function to a degree, but they're modified for non-lethal pellets. You know, for legal reasons. What kind of non-lethal ammo does it fire? Paint bullets, but not paintball exactly. These are the smaller variety pellets used in high-tech tactical training. These suckers pinpoint. And just because you can't get killed doesn't mean you want one of these paint pellets pelting you. They leave a whale of a welt. Could real anim ammo possibly be fired from the rentals? No. Not without substituting a real barrel onto the weapon. And even then, a special adapter has to be installed. And, well, it would be more trouble than it's worth. And we don't rent the real barrels out, if that's what you're thinking. Did anyone bring in their own weapon? Seems to me one of them did. But I'm hazy on who, and what caliber the weapon was. I mean, I see so many guns in this place. But it'll be on the sign-in sheet. We're all over it when somebody brings their own gun into our space. Did anyone purchase a weapon here? Now that you mention, the one who seemed to be the boss, fella who paid for the session, Stan Everston, he bought a 45 auto and some ammo for it. Okay. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Wow, look at that grouping. That kind of shooting takes considerable practice. Can I do anything else here?
Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Totally average gamer Shuke. Hello, sorry I'm late, was eating dingen. Hello, welcome. And don't be sorry, I'm glad that you joined. I've had a couple of people come in for a few minutes, but um, for the rest of the time I've been flying solo here, so assistance is always welcome. I can't do anything else with this thing. No, so I guess I go to the lab and check out the new stuffs I've got. I hope you can hear me okay, because one of the people told me my sound was low. If you still can't hear me well, please let me know, so I can check settings some more. We've done all we can do with that item. Okay. There's more to do with this evidence before we can process it. I need to do a bit of cleaning so I won't be able to apply for a little bit. Okay, cleaning is part of adulting. Good luck. Not the right tool for this. It says enhances fingerprints on smooth polished surfaces. You gonna tell me that a photograph is not a smooth polish? Uh, let's try the spray then. Okay. You got a fingerprint? Let's go check out the fingerprint. And let's see, my ass fingerprints. Nope. Fingerprint for the assault rifle that was Maya. Partial doesn't work. And these fingerprints. Nope. And that's all the fingerprints we have. I think. Let's see. And the partial. This is both Maya. Okay. Let's search. The game audio is quite loud, but I can still hear you, okay. I've really, I've tuned out, down the, the game audio for, uh, for about 8 decibel, 9 decibel already. And it seems it doesn't do a lot. I wish I was more tech savvy so I know how to uh, change stuff like this in a good way. But glad you can still hear me. do anything with the booklet can we do anything with the back side then nope boring nothing to do with this nothing to do with this Oh, maybe we... Maybe we can... We've done all we can oh. do with that item. Okay, let's go to press then. That maybe he has got something for us. Can I talk to a suspect? That's fine. She's on her way to interrogation now. Hopefully Maya has something to say to us. Probably not. Oh, yes. Did you argue with Stan at the gun club? Argue is a little strong. We raised our voices, but hell, it's loud in a firing range. I guess maybe I started to kid him, you know? And it got out of hand. Let's see, have there been any other disagreements between you two? Just childish crap. Like this insulting text message you sent me the other night? Really pissed me off. What did the text message say? Oh, know. hell, I don't remember. I mean, it's a dead issue, right? Sorry, that sounded bad. I just mean, 
The guy's gone. Let's cut him a break. Did you see a fight between Greg and Sam? No. I know Craig wanted his job back. Maybe my looks and charm weren't the only thing Craig saw in me. Maybe he also wanted to know about the state of office politics. Anyway, in his car we were griping about Stan, and Craig told me he tried to talk to Stan back at the convention center, but that it hadn't turned out so hot. Case file updated. Okay. Case file. He is the executive producer for this game company, LPC Games. He was alone in a demo room with programmer uh, at 10.30. Was shot with a 22 Galloper weapon. Had a reputation for getting what he wanted at all costs. Took a group to a gun club for target practice and research. He fired Greg. And he purchased a uh, 45 automatic and some bullets at the gun club. Okay. Suspects. Maya. She ran the marketing campaign, rented several firearms for display at the demo booth, left Greg's car at 1.30, has been under intense work pressure from Stan and no time for her daughter. She was with Greg until 1.30, yes that's what's set up there. Had a heated argument with Stan at the gun club. Andy Penmore shared a room with the victim. They worked at the demo booth at 1 a.m. He was the first employee hired by Stan and Greg's son, Landers. Shortly after Greg's game was cancelled, he was fired by Stan. It's the creator of Fuzzy and Bill franchise. Claims the last he saw Stan was 10 p.m. at the gun club. He slept in his car park near the crime scene. Maya was with him until 1.30. He left the company to work on less violent games. Had a, his a history of unpopular jokes and went to ask for his job back from Stan. Reconstructions, okay. To evidence trinity. I didn't even use this at the in, in my first <laughs> playthrough. Suspect, victim, crime scene. Nothing for Andy. Two things for Maya, with our green. Okay, go to case file. What can we do now? Uh, maybe that dude can tell us some more? Because he said he quit the job and he was fired? Yes. Do you own a 22 handgun? Uh, yeah. Legally purchased in California and registered to me. Why? Why did you bring a gun with you to Vegas? Did I break some statute or something? It's just Stan and Andy suggested I bring it. Something about getting the team into the reality behind first-person shooting games. Stan knows, knew, I have a gun and know my way around firearms. He thought I could give the gang a few tips. Okay. Mind if we look around your car? Hey, uh, I do want to help, but they say a man's home is his castle and right now, these wheels are all the castle I've got. I know all about my rights, including you needing a search warrant first. I'm sorry, dude. Can we get your fingerprints and do a gunpowder test? That I'll do. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. Stan's death is a shock to me. Do your tests. Okay, evidence updated. Uh, did you argue with Stan at the demo room? Where didn't I argue with Stan? We fought like brothers, I told you that. Why? Did that creep Andy say- Look, it's no big deal. I don't know what Penmore's problem is anyway. Hell, I'm the one on the outside. He's the one with part ownership of LZP now. He was the new brother. Replaced me in Stan's heart and company. So, did you quit or were you fired? Technically, I was fired. But let's just say I already had my desk cleared out. Why does that matter? What was the reason you were fired? The real reason or the stated one? Because, you see, officially, I wasn't a good fit with the new vision of the company, but really, it was our disagreement about the future of LZP, and my desire to have a little goddamn responsibility about who we were selling our products to. The pisser is, oh, and I get so steamed just thinking about it. I, I trusted him when we set things up, so he wound up owning my intellectual property, and I'm left at square one. What intellectual property did Stan keep? I created the original Fuzzy and Bill online comic years ago. 
way before LZP. Then I sold Stan the full commercial rights for a dollar, on the understanding that he would make it into a game, with me in for a big share as an employee of LZP. We published, the game didn't sell big, but it had a following. Stan decided to bury Fuzzy and Bill, not just the video game, all other merchandising too, just to put me in my place. There the property sits, still at LZP, and here I sit, out of work and no way to make a nickel on my own creation. Why are your knuckles red? What? Oh, that. Uh, it'll sound lame, but I was out in the desert catching scorpions the other day. Little critters scurry around the rocks, you know, and these are my uh, red badges of stupidity. You telling me you actually got into a fist fight would sound less lame. You can save us a step by letting us take an impression of your ring. We can get a warrant. Easy, but... I got nothing to hide. Actually, I got nothing, period. Ring. We can check that with the photo of the indent on the guy's chest. Uh, let's see, why did you make the target of Stan's face? Back in better days, Stan and I shared a kind of warped sense of humor. Maybe I was trying to get that back, or maybe I was just trying to get back at him. But it doesn't matter, because I didn't even shoot it. That was Maya. No, Maya had some sk skills then. Okay, okay. I'm starting to wonder how anti-violence Craig Landers really is. Well, the tox screen is in. While there was no venom detectable in the bloodstream, a high number of antibodies were present, confirming the sting happened within 48 hours. Could be a yellow jacket, could be a scorpion. What else can you tell me about the scorpion stings? Well, most of them are non-lethal, to adults at least. Worst case, the sting could have caused anaphylactic shock, like a bee or wasp sting. A severe reaction can cause death, but not in this case. Does the ring match the bruise on the victim? The bruising patterns match up to these markings. Also, the bruise had a very large white blood cell count, which only happens when the person hit is alive. That means this ring struck Stan Everston before he died. talk to him again I've told you everything I know but you hit him I've told you everything Arr. I know okay probably go to press then can I get a warrant for Greg Vandas we have a strong Arr. connection here the bullets are 22 he owns a 22 his shirt is at the scene and Landers has a bit of history with our Vic the search warrant will be for a handgun or handgun accessories. Okay, okay. Let's go back. Oh, crud. Um, wait, wait. I demand to see a lawyer. I know my rights. You watch too much TV, man. Stay nearby in case we have any questions. <laughs> Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Looks like this area is clean. I didn't even Way to be think. thorough. This guy takes his gaming seriously, but it's not covered <laughs> by our warrant. That looks like a Nintendo Game Boy. <laughs> Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. 
for some reason it really wants to say that. These 22 caliber bullets are the Looks same like brand this area as the ones is found in the body. Quite to be thorough. Why do we have two voices for each other? That's annoying. Looks like this no. area is clean. Way to be thorough. I think there's a bug in this game. Every time I don't even do anything. Scorpion collectors. I just don't get it. Luckily, this is not covered by our warrant. <laughs> not like it is. Looks I like this the... area is clean. It's clean. Way I to be see thorough. The gun. Play. Stupid error. Ah uh, yes, the mysterious twenty looks like this area is clean. Last we meet. Way to be thorough. <laughs> there is a bug here. Looks like this area is clean. clean. Way, Way to be thorough. thorough. <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. I've told you everything I know. Okay, okay, let's get back to the lab then with the gun. Do we have a firing range so we can test the bullets? We've done all we can do with that item. I can put it there, but then that's all I can do with it. I have no idea what to do with it. I'm not getting any evidence kits collecting stuff. Maybe I have to go to press for the gun, because I don't think we have a shooting range here. No? <sighs> She's on her way to interrogation Probably now. Probably has nothing else to say. Oh. So what if I did? Craig plastered that pick on the target. I took aim and showed them my stuff. Gotta give Stan credit. He laughed. For a while. <laughs> Your shooting is better than some she's eyes. Maybe you guys ought to join the gun club. Me, I was raised around firearms. My dad was ex-military and his big hobby was hunting. Plus, I didn't have any brothers and kind of went the tomboy route to please daddy, who trained me in guns from grade school. But I never could bring myself to shoot animals. So I was strictly a target range girl and I have the medals to prove it. I used my experience to help Andy with his in-game physics simulations. Not that he showed any gratitude. After all, I'm only marketing. He's the coder. Okay, nothing new. That's all I have to say. How can we test the bullets in this game? Maybe we have to fire the bullet, uh, the gun ourselves? I can't think of anything else for you. I don't have anything for you right now. That's disappointing. Okay, uh, I have to go grab a drink. Give me a second. Got my drinks, huh?
what to do now. Analysis. DNA. I can put it on the table, but that's all I can do. This is kind of annoying because I have no idea what I have to do right now. I can drag it on here, but I can't shoot it, I can't get any... Oh! Wait! Okay, what now? We've done all we can do with that item. How does this work? Where do I click? Around. The weapon's what? unloaded, but the barrel's been tampered with. Somebody scraped the inside of it. Maybe they were trying to discourage ballistics matches. The gunpowder from Landers 22 matches the second type of powder found on the 45 automatic? Striations don't match, which is not a shock, considering the barrel's been tampered with. So I'm not ready to rule this out as the murder weapon. It would be nice to know whether this gun was futzed with before or after the crime. Our ousted game designer either knowingly or unknowingly provided the bullets that killed his former boss. The problem is, somehow all three of our suspects fired these rounds. The electron microscope confirms the gunpowder found on the forehead wound matches all three of our suspects' hands. This definitely muddies the water a little bit. Hmm. What's up? We have a real mystery here. Let me lay it out for you. We have a 22 caliber bullet that we found in the body. Its GSR matches this box of 22 bullets. We also recovered a 22 handgun owned by one of the suspects and have found the same GSR traces on it. Okay. But ballistics don't match, so this weapon didn't actually fire the bullets into the Vic. Sounds like you need to find a different 22. Well, there's one more twist. The 45 handgun we found at the crime scene also has traces of the 22 bullets GSR on its hammer. But, as you know, it can't fire a 22 round. That's true. But didn't I overhear something about modified rifles from the gun range? Yeah, but that's out. It only fired paint pellets. Same concept, Nick. How do you fire a non-standard bullet from a weapon? Modify the weapon. I'd go back to the gun shop and see what else they know. Okie dokie, Catherine, let's do that. Do you sell conversion kits for 45 to 22? We don't stock them, but they're easy enough to special order. Those kits are fairly popular, because they let you train with less expensive rounds. 22s are way cheaper than 45s, and more common too. Heck, around here, you can buy 22 cartridges at convenience stores. Did you sell an adapter 
Contrary. Did you sell an adapter to anyone in the video game party? No. The only thing they bought was bullets. How hard is it to install an adapter? You don't have to be a gunsmith. Anybody who knows his or her way around a gun could do it in a couple of minutes. Don't even need special tools. Would you like to order one? No, thanks. We have our own sources. Can you collect a 22 round fired by the game group? No problem. I'll pick one out of the wall for you. Okay. Hey, I didn't have to go far to get that gun adapter after all. Local police reserves had one. Take this and do your test. We've done all we can do with that item. Mm. We can definitely rule out Craig Lander's 22 handgun as the murder weapon. The bullet fired at the gun club does not match the bullets from the victim. I'm figuring out what I how I have to use this. So I have to put it on a small gun then. Good job. Ooh, Next stop, I ballistics lab. <laughs> I don't even get to shoot it? Boring. I thought I got to sh get to shoot it. Okay, let's try and go to the microscope again. Bullet. Uh, bullet from the crime scene. The striations on the spent bullets are similar, but not exact, to those found in Everston's body. This is not surprising, since our adapter clearly didn't shoot him. We need to find the actual adapter to confirm it. Mm -hmm. And where would we do that? Let's see if Brass can help us out. I'll get my boys to start searching for it immediately. Check back later. She's on her way to interrogation now. Maybe she knows something about the gun? Barbara Nelt? That's all I have to say. That's boring. Mm. Maybe I should talk some more to that, this dude? I've divulged everything I can think of. Okay. Uh. Oh, this 
moment. It's really looking bad for this dude. But I still have to do something, I guess, but I have no idea what. I have used all the items I've gotten. Used the stuff here I could use. Use this stuff. What to do now? Oh, maybe go now. Go now I can go back to grass. He said, "Go check back later." Nope. Uh, I'm stuck. There's probably something I'm missing. I just have no clue what I am missing at this moment. Should I talk to the dude with the car again then? I've told you everything I know. What am I missing? I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. I hate this, I'm stuck. Can't really check the back. He's still sitting there with the salad. I should have. I would have tossed that salad out a long time ago. Okay, I'm missing something. I just have no idea what. Anybody have a walkthrough? <laughs> Forty-five automatic. This could be our murder weapon. Someone could have shot our Vic, then placed the gun back in the display. Okay. Ooh, I found something. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's fire a bullet from the 45. This will give us a striation sample. The 45 appears unmodified. It has three bullets in its clip. I processed the GSR from the 45's hammer. There's an anomaly though. The 45 has two different variations of gunshot residue. One matches the 45, but the second is from some other bullet. I ran the serial number through firearms registration database. And the computer tells us this isn't a gun club gun. It was owned and registered to our victim. Mm. Okay. Okay, so this is not doing anything. Ah, okay. 
She's on her way to interrogation now. I have no idea if she has something new to tell me. Probably not. Oh, why did you have a modified assault weapon and a demo booth? We rented the weapons from the gun club. I have no idea if they were modified or not. I didn't purchase any ammo. They were for show only. Why was there a real 45 in the devil booth? Stan couldn't see renting a 45 automatic when he just bought one. Sure, it was real. Hadn't been modified for safety, but hey, it was unloaded. And it's not like somebody would be walking around the trade show with a pocket full of bullets. Yesterday that sounded more reasonable. Bad, how is it going? Uh, slowly. I sometimes just, just try things because I'm not sure how to proceed. It takes me a few times, but slowly going in the right, in the right direction. Why did Stan Well, he it? said he bought it for the company. It's the first weapon the art and sound staff used as reference. Andy thought he could program the game more realistically if he was familiar with the weapon, with its physics, as Andy put it. As I said, we are all about realism. The game has to be convincing. How are you doing? I hope you knew your dinner was fine. Just wondering where to go from here. Ralph told me to come back later for... No, he still has nothing on the barrel enhancement. Okay, so I guess I'm kind of stuck now. I have no idea what I should be doing. I've used everything I can use. I've checked everything I can check. Uh, yeah, I'm alright, thanks. Head's hurting a bit because with some teeth, but I'm okay apart from that dinner was good. Ooh. I had all four of my wisdom teeth pulled, so I know how annoying they can be. Uh, let's see, Greg still has all this against him. But I have no idea what to do right now. Because when I say I want to talk to Greg, he says he has nothing to tell me. Yes, they suck. Yep. This, uh, this, oh, this wasn't Greg or... Wait, he has something to tell me, this dude. D did you ask Stan to buy a gun? Who told you that? Maya? Typical. Trying to make me look bad, take the heat off her after she was screaming at Stan. Which is why she was having problems with him. You had to know how to handle that guy, and attacking and counterattacking was bad strategy. If you don't mind, let's just get back to the question. Did you ask Stan Everston to buy you a gun? Of course I did. How else could I program a game this realistic without understanding the actual physics of the key weapon? Also, our art staff needed it for reference. Is any of that hard to grasp? Look, I never shot anything more real than a super soaker. Not that Stan took much convincing. He'd been wanting to buy a gun for himself for some time. He had a genuine paranoid streak. Only, now that he's a murder victim, he doesn't seem quite so paranoid, I guess. Whose 45 ammo is in the gun? It's Stan's. He, he bought it for his 45. He used it last night at the gun club. Hmm? But at the gun club? They, she was talking about a 22. Should we go back to the gun club and talk to her then? I can't think of anything else for you. Nope. Nothing there. It's nice to have some new information, but I can't do anything with it. I have no idea what to do. I feel kind of lost in this game right now. Let's see if she can talk a little She's bit. She's on more. her way to interrogation now. It all seems so simple when you watch a TV show and then you have to do it yourself, and I'm very lost. But so far, 
I'm making small progresses. Uh, how did Andy and Stan get along at work? They had a lot of history before I got there, you know? Like, they had tension sometimes, but there was also a bond. Almost like they could read each other's minds or something. By the end of the project, they were mostly staying out of each other's way. And, you know, maybe I'm out of line for saying this, but I don't know why Stan trusted the guy. Word around the office was, Andy's an old school hacker. What kind of old school hacker? The kind who likes to break into stuff. Recently, I let him install a version of GutWrench 3 on my computer. Only since then, my machine's been working really, really slow. Andy says he did nothing, but I think he accessed my files. Well, indeed. Sorry for a late reply. Wisdom teeth too suck. I, do, I, I wonder why we still get them. <laughs> because we don't really use them. That's all I have to say. Okay. Maybe talk to the guy at the car again? I've told you everything I know. Nope. I've divulged everything I can think of. She's on her way to interrogation Missing now. something, but I can't see what I'm missing. That's all I have to say. Hmm. What am I missing? I can't think of anything else for you. That's not helping. Used all these items. These are pictures. Angry note. Business card. All these pro all these items have a red dot next to them, and according to the game information, if it has a red dot next to it, you did everything you can do with it. But why do I get the feeling I'm missing something then? We've done all we can do with that item. We've done all we can do with that item. We've done all we can do with that item. Just write something. We've done all we can do with that item. That'll go on the trace analysis computer. Oh. I didn't know that. Was this the thing your wife was missing? Looks like our Vic was busy mm. making friends right up to the end. With a text message this close to the time of death, this could have provoked an attack. Or the messages could have been sent after the murder. Maybe somebody used Everson's cell phone to send messages, going off the time of death. Hey, how's the video game case going? It's not game over yet. We've got some suspects, including a high-strung marketer, an aloof programmer, and a mysterious designer. Any good physical evidence yet? Nothing substantial, but it's still early in the case. We just ran his phone messages, it looks like he sent this message just before he died. Maybe. Didn't Doc Robbins report the time of death was estimated? And you didn't actually find his phone at the scene. If Stan sent the last message just before he died, where's his phone? Maybe someone else sent that message after the murder and then tossed the phone. You know what Grissom would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow the evidence. Nokia, yes. <laughs> those were the <laughs> those were the things in the day. Uh, brush, maybe. Or no. Um. Maybe he's got some information about the time. I don't have anything for you right now.
what am I missing here? I thought I was doing good. Turns out I'm missing something, but I'm not sure what I'm missing. We've done all we can do with that item. Hmm. We've done all we can do with that item. I've processed all these items. And these as well. We've done all we can do with that item. Why can't I use a partial fingerprint? I'm feeling I've got... I'm missing something, but I don't know what. It's something to do with this because it's the only thing not having a red dot yet, but I can't use my database. Uh, it's very annoying when you can't use your database. <sighs> Okay, anybody I know any ideas? Nobody? <laughs> What am I missing? Let's go. I'm just going to go back to the first thing and see if I can find anything. Hey, no, 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 looking no, for a hint? No, no, no. that I've been missing. Uh, okay, let's go to the lab. Let's check that fingerprint. And hopefully it will proceed from there again. Keeping fingers crossed, of course. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm not very good at these types of games. Okay, no worries. Oh, don't worry, I'm just trying to get some interaction in the game. I thought it might be fun, you know, just to uh, <laughs> play together in a way. I'm not very good at them either, so... Nope. Still can choose this one. Why can't I find a match? Somebody must match with this, right? Ah, 
time I was floating. Craig had his hands on the weapons case. Another potential link to the crime scene. Trinity updated warrant available from us. This was the bit I was missing. Thank you for going back and finding it. Woohoo! Oh, thank me. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get that warrant. For Greg. <laughs> sure. Let's bring in the guy whose ring matches our Vic's chest. How did the inner barrel of your gun get scraped? Well, you tell me, detective. I let all of them, Maya, Andy, even Stan, fire my gun that night. Any of them could have screwed with it. Hey, you don't think one of them's trying to frame me for this thing, do you? Well, I think we can safely rule Stan Everston out, but I can see why you'd be pissed at Stan the man. Cancels your pet project, fires you, and keeps ownership of a company you built as much as he did. Every game company has conflicts between the creative and business side. Okay? Producers like Stan don't look at a monitor and see the energy and the brilliance that go into a great game. All they see is a damn spreadsheet. He didn't hold a gun to my head and make me sell my intellectual property to him. That was my stupid fault. How did you know Stan would be at the convention center after the party? Well, during the party, Andy told Stan that there were new bugs with the game, and Stan, being the predictable control freak he was, had to go there and hunt down the bugs personally. He would have stayed there all night if he needed to. So you went begging for your job back. Come Not on. begging. Look, it was all business for Stan, and I was talent. And damn good talent. I figured he'd be able to look past our differences and see how I could positively impact his bottom line. And, hey, I admit, I thought that maybe after Gut Wrench 3 came out, we could revive Fuzzy and Bill again. How did that go over with Stan? Not so good. I pushed too hard. And we both said things that that old friends should never have said. He said LZP had outgrown me, and and I accused him of bad-mouthing me in the industry to where I couldn't even get a low-end job. I admit it. Okay, I admit it. It got a little ugly. I accused him of exploiting every worst instinct in the gaming market, selling violence and sex, made all the worse by killing the very game that could have provided a fun alternative. And if he wasn't going to do Fuzzy and Bill, couldn't he at least sign it back over to me? He just laughed. So that's when you threatened Stan? Hoping to scare him into giving you Fuzzy and Bill back? He didn't back down. He didn't really punch him. He took it. And then ripped your shirt as you fled. But you went back to your gun instead. The Stan gone, LZP would turn to you. You'd put the company back on track. Well done for finding the item. Thank you. I just had a hunch go back and check everything. You got it half right anyway. I took a swing at that prick. And I'm guilty of getting my butt kicked by the guy after. <laughs> uh, I just picked up what little was left of my dignity and I went back to my car. So it looks like we're gonna solve this crime before my stream time is up. That's everything I know. Mm -hmm. Questioning location. Do I have to go to press again? Is this enough for a warrant? No. Did I miss anything else then? I fell asleep a bit. <laughs> Hello, welcome, Fandangli. Um, I'm trying to close a case. I've done part of the work, but there's something I still need to do because I can't arrest anyone just yet. But sometimes a nap can be very nice to have. So no worries about that. I'm just thinking of what am I missing to close this case. Uh, 
the motel room still hasn't got a red dot, so it could be that I missed something at the motel. Hmm. Oh my. What am I missing? No, let's just go to the motel, see if we, if, if we missed anything there. I don't think we have. Or I have, sorry. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Mm -hmm. Ah, I have a new question for the dude. What time did you get back to I the wasn't keeping track. Best guess, 1 a.m., a little after. G call it 5 after. Can you prove you're here? Shouldn't be too hard. There's security cameras in the lobby. Can't you check those out? That tells us what time you were in the lobby, but what else can you tell us? Well, uh, I remember I watched a pay-per-view movie last night. That's something the company doesn't pay for, by the way. Gotta cover all incidentals ourselves. Anyway, I've got the receipt right here. Revenge of the Psycho Blood Mutants. Brass could check that out on the security cam footage. Okay, and they rented movies at the hotel. Or so, it seems. Uh, are you part owner of the LSP games? Actually, no, but uh, I should be soon. Stan promised me a piece of the corporate pie because of my stellar work on Gut Wrench 3. It's not supposed to happen till the game's complete and on the shelves. And that'll be delayed because of this tragedy. We, we didn't have anything in writing, but there were witnesses to our oral contract. But I'm not the only one who was promised a payday. Let me give you a different file, one that I think you'll be more interested in. It's on my PDA. Now he wants to share the PDA. When, when I wanted to look at his PDA, he was all protective about it. Okay. Uh... Downloading data. Location search. Hey, we've done everything we could on this location. We got a new encrypted file, so I'm guessing we're going back to the lab. Uh, where is that encrypted file? Let me just put it in there and search. Hmm. Press coverage of Gut Wrench 3 is tied to Maya Wynn's payday. The bigger the media splash, the bigger her bonus. However, note that it was encrypted. Andy didn't just get this forwarded. He hacked it. <laughs> Probably. What did we get? Movie rental receipt. Let's run this evidence by brass. Okay. Let's run this evidence by brass. Oh, I thought. I We've done all we can do oh. with that item. Okay, uh, what do we have now? I'm guessing we're going to brass. Uh, mm -hmm. Adding, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Let's go to brass, sorry. Distract us for a second. Can you verify when Andy and Maya got back to the... The security car? chief at the Sphere says their videotape puts Andy Penmore returning at 1.08 a.m. and staying put. Maya didn't get in until 2.15, giving her a half hour to do who knows what. With the hotel connected to the convention center, she has opportunity. He's on his way to interrogation now. Let's try him. Let's see if he has something new to tell us. I think we're almost through. That's everything I know. Oh. Okay. That's not much. 
I think we're almost through with this, so I'm trying to finish this one up before ending the stream. She's on her way to interrogation now. Ah, we got some new questions. When, why did you reply to Stan's text message? I'm a professional, but I'm human, okay? He was unprofessional and would not let the hell up, so I snapped back. That's one of those bad things about text messaging, you know? You wind up writing things you'd never say. Where were you between 1.30 and 2.10 a.m.? We have security video showing you getting back to your room half an hour after you left Craig's. Your hotel room is less than five minutes away. What, you stopped to gamble? No, I'd already gambled enough going for a one-night backseat stand. In fact, I sat at the curb and just held my head in my hands and thought about my life and my kid and... I said I was human. A tired human who let go for once. Fresh air felt good. Okay. When did you get the marketing bonus contract? From day one. It was part of the job offer that convinced me to sign up with LZP. I had offers from two other companies. Both bigger, you know. But this was a real opportunity to make my mark. And a box of money. Why would a marketing person rate bigger money than the creative side? Marketing is king in the entertainment world. And the game industry is an increasingly bigger part of that world, with marketing campaigns that run to the millions. More sometimes than goes into the game themselves. A great game that sits on a shelf is a flop. A weak game that flies off the shelves is a win. And we're looking at a crime scene that seems designed by a marketing whiz. Aimed at generating a lot of press. Vic posed to like the body on the game's poster. It's genius, really. And here you are with a sweetheart contract tying national press to your bonus. Nicely done, Ms. Wynn. With your expertise as a competition shooter, you know all about weapon adapters. Then you heard about Craig and Stan getting into it, so you seize the moment, killing your pain of a boss, posing him for the inevitable press coverage, placing the assault rifle just right, though leaving a nasty little print behind. Then back to your hotel room. You're right. The killer did me a favor. And I'll probably make money because of the way that crime scene was staged. But I didn't stage it, and I didn't kill Stan. But maybe I can help you. Why don't you take a look at a file I downloaded for you, about Andy Penmore. It's on my flash drive. You might get somewhere with it. Okay, another one, Jig White Sand Disk Flash Drive. I would also say, next to GMC, Sand Disk is one of the sponsors of the game. Okay, uh, we could ask all the questions. We... Let's talk to press for a bit. Let's see if he has something new. No? Okay, let's go to the lab then. Let's check out that USB drive. Um. Church. Let's run this evidence by brass. Okay. Let's go to brass again then. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking we're close to solving the case. Uh, have you made any progress on finding the murder weapon? Catherine gave me the heads up on this development. Our convention center security pals used a metal detector around where that cell phone was recovered. Here's your adapter. Oh, you're gonna love this. Turns out both of these items were within 30 feet of Lander's car. Mm hmm nice. We're getting somewhere. Okay, now I'm supposed to go to the lab, I guess. Uh, Assembly table. There's more to do with this evidence before we can process it. Okay. Ah, I have a big friend on it. Let's get that fingerprint. We got it. 
Okay, now let's check the fingerprint. trying every fingerprint I have because I can <laughs> partial still not working no nope. this looks the evidence suggests that Andy Penmore had possession of Stan Everston's cell phone and now we have Andy's fingerprint on the gun adapter tying him to the murder weapon mm -hmm. nice. let's go back to the table then because I still think we have to check this um, items. Good job. Next stop, ballistics lab. Our murder weapon back together again for this special encore performance. Woohoo! Warrant available from press. Guys, we're gonna finish this second case, and I'm gonna start the third in the next stream. <laughs> well, hello, Andy. <laughs> guys, 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 we're gonna finish this case. Nice, yes. I want a warrant for Andy. Andy's prints are on the Vic cell phone and on How the murder you know weapon that? adapter. Time to stop all the games and play for real. Let's arrest this guy. Every time I tried to check that print from the phone, I couldn't use it. And now he says, hurts so much. How can he know that? Have you been working as much as my lady? As much? More? Try eight days in a row. My eyes are burning right now from sitting at a monitor, making this game fly. Was that what you bargained for? Actually, yes. Everybody in the game industry knows that long hours is part of the deal. I'm in this field because I love it. <clears throat> I'm a lucky guy, making games for a living. Have you seen this document from Stan? What is this, some stupid attempt to entrap me? It's no fake, Andy. Well, then Stan Everston was a fake. If this is true, he was planning to renege on my piece of the action. Bastard lied to me. If I'd have known this, you really would have a right to look at me as a murder suspect. But I didn't know, and I didn't kill him. Oh, I'd like to strangle his ass right now. Well played, Andy. But a gifted hacker like you? You've known about that email all along. You're reaching, but you aren't touching anything. Read my lips. I never saw this stupid thing before. Anyway, when Stan was killed, my stake in the company hadn't kicked in yet. What would I have gained killing that liar? You didn't have a stake yet, and you found out you never would. Not unless you removed Stan and brought in witnesses who heard his oral contract to you. Andy, we found the cell phone, we know about the adapter, and your prints are on it. Then there's the little matter of you being the last one to see Stan Everston alive. I wasn't the last one to see him alive. The killer was. You don't play this game at all well, guys, but good luck to you. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Am I free to go? Nope. How could I do that from my hotel room, which is where I was when he was killed? Sure you were. There's no proof of that, by the way. Just flimsy setups from you to make us think you were there. If that's the best you can do, I can't wait to see you try to build a case on air like this in court. You're right, we don't have the evidence we need, but we have a lot of testimony. Help us find the real killer, since you're innocent and all. I see. <laughs> you pretend to ask for my help when you really want me to try to incriminate myself give you false testimony on facts so you can trip me up. If I don't, then I'm unwilling and you hold me longer. So, on game, I'll help you. Okay, well then, who convinced Stan into inviting Craig, persona non grata, to the gun club party? 
I did. I don't deny that. Who also told Craig to bring his own 22? Who ensured Stan bought and brought his 45? Who researched how weapons work in the real world? Who told Stan there was a last minute problem with the game, ensuring he would stay late at the demo center? I did, but none of that means I killed him, of course. Well, I'm just getting started. Who knew that an adapter for both a 22 and a 45 would be needed for this coincidence? Who knew Maya not only had a PR bonus, but was also an expert shot? Who was ready with flimsy alibis when the others decided to hook up on an accidental meeting? Uh... Who set this whole thing up months in advance the minute you found that email telling you your payday was gone the way of floppy disks? You can't prove that. This is what we can prove, dot, dot. Let me walk you through what we can prove, thanks to your help. By ensuring both the 45 and the 22 would be at the club, you could grab a few of Craig's bullets. When you told Stan there were problems with the game, he gave you the 45 and the ammo to take back to the room while he went to the convention center. You walked through the lobby so the cameras could see you, entered the room, ordered your movie, modified the gun, and then snuck out. Once in the demo room, you cranked up the game audio and shot Stan twice in the chest Why and the once in the head. So then you staged the crime scene to potentially throw blame on Maya or maybe just some disgruntled fan. You also turned down the air conditioning to further confuse the time of death. You switched out the adapter, wiped the 45 clean, and returned it to the gun case. Then you grabbed Stan's cell, punched in your second alibi and bolted back to your room to order that alibi salad. Guys, I have a decent video card. You wiped Why off the it? phone and adapter, like this. and the next morning, you ditched him <laughs> near Craig's car. Easy to find, right? However, in your haste, you left partial prints on both items. Then it was off to the convention, from one con right into another. You see, Andy, we're not trying to get you to incriminate yourself. You said that you'd help us. The truth is, we don't need anything from you. We know what you did, and we know how you did it. Combined with all the physical evidence we got on you, we have everything we need. No, you'll never make this play in court. This murder was all a game to you, wasn't it? But there was a glitch in your programming. It's your sick ego, and that's a bug you'll never get out of your system. That was an interesting case. It's funny. Andy tried so hard to control every detail to cover up his involvement. And since you uncovered that every detail was controlled by him, that was the break we needed. Physical evidence is strong, but it's the context of that evidence to the events that makes it the strongest. Well done. Let's move on to your case evaluation. <laughs> I really had to You investigated that. every possible angle on this case. It doesn't happen often, but I'm very impressed. Ooh, let's see what my rankings are with first person shooter. Master, so last time I did okay. First time I did okay, and this is just Woohoo! I'm a master. Okay, guys and girls, girls and guys. Next case I'm going to do is Daddy's Girl, but that will be for next time. Thank you very much, Van Dangli. Uh, my, my two hours is up. It's been up ten minutes ago. It's time for me to relax a little bit before bedtime. Uh, there will be no streams tomorrow as I'm uh, participating with Twitch Blackout. I think Twitch should be a, a safe place for people to stream and to have good con gaming conversations or other conversations, because we talked about TV shows this afternoon. But I think it should be a safe haven to enjoy. And at this moment, it's not a safe haven for an everyone, so I'm participating in Switch Blackout tomorrow. If I have some energy and time, I probably will start Daddy's Girl Thursday afternoon. But I'll tweet about that. PlayStation Pixie is where you should be on Twitter. Just PlayStation, as you know, from the game console by Sony and Pixie with P-I-X-Y. That's me. Thank you very much for being here at Totally Average Gamers UK. That's a very big mouthful. And Van Dengli, I really enjoyed your company. I hope to see you again next time. 
and I hope to catch one of you streaming someday. I have all my alerts on, so if someone is streaming when I can watch, I'll try to watch, or I will watch. Thank you very much for being there. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for being here. I really enjoyed it. Have a very good evening, and I hope to see you again someday. Bye-bye for now, guys.